Hey everyone, it's Mr. Klein. Uh, I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes going over these intro paragraph examples. And again, these can be found in the Essay Fundamentals module. Okay, so you're responsible for this whole module. Um, these two sections especially are really important, how to use sources in text citation and MLA citation. So make sure you check those out. But of course, they're all important. But you'll click into here, it's the second example. Don't forget to look at the first examples too. And what I'd like to do is kind of walk through these things and point out some of the features that make these effective intros, okay? So, first of all, an intro is a three-step process, right? We first introduce the general topic. We let our reader know what subject we are going to be discussing. In general, you don't want to get too specific here. You don't want to give too many details or too much outside information here. You're just introducing the topic, okay? So here we see, there's nothing worse than seeing the red flash of police sirens in your rear view mirror. Being pulled over can be a nerve wracking experience, not to mention expensive. Okay, so we know just in two sentences that we're gonna be talking about something relating to policing, law enforcement, getting pulled over. But notice, we don't know what this is yet. It could be anything, like how to not get pulled over, or um, how do you interact with a police officer when you're pulled over. But we just don't know, we don't know yet. We only know that it's gonna probably have to do with policing, okay? Now, after you've established your general topic in the first one to three sentences, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna introduce more information. You want to give your reader background, context. They may have never thought about this before, whatever topic you're talking about, so they need some information. So this whole middle section is giving your reader more information, and you're getting more specific about what is the problem, what is the issue. You're no longer just talking about the topic, but what about that topic? Why is it important? Why should we care? And you introduce some information, outside sources, facts, data, statistics, numbers of some kind, to prove your point. So here, you can see that we incorporated a, a, a quote from an outside source, a finance blog, and we have this that follows it, okay? So this is an extremely important aspect of essay writing at the college level. Anytime you use outside sources, Anytime you use a statistic, a number, a statement from a professional, a quote, you have to follow it with this. And this is called an in-text citation, okay? Another way to refer to this specific thing is a parenthetical citation, because the information in it is held within parentheses. Those two little, you know, you, see, you make old school emoji, smiling or sad faces there. Well, those are actually for something. Those are called parentheses, all right? So, Whenever you use outside information, you introduce an outside source, a quote, a number, from any place. You have to always quote it, if it's exact words, of course, and then you have to tell me where you got it, who said it, okay? And that information comes right here, all right? So in the middle section, you're giving your reader facts, you're giving them data, you're giving them the WH questions, who, what, where, when, why. Who is involved in this issue or problem? Is it Americans? Is it a global problem? Um, is it young people? Is it college students? Uh, who is involved? What is the issue? What's the problem or conflict? Um, what is the thing that we should care about? Where in the world is this happening? Again, is this, oh, my dog is coughing. Uh, my, is this a North Carolina thing? Is this only a United States thing? And why, why is this happening? So who, what, where, and why, get in there, and then, once your reader has been given enough details, information, proving to them that there's, there's something interesting to be talked about, you wanna to prove to them that there's some conflict, some problem that needs to be addressed, okay? And then now, in the very end, we have our thesis statement, okay? And a thesis statement is where you lay out very specifically what the rest of your paper is going to discuss. So you can see here, it says, recent evidence and studies suggest that things like implicit unconscious bias rooted in the brain may play a huge role in the bias we see in law enforcement and studying these biases could lead us to solutions to the epidemic of police brutality we are currently seeing in the United States. So you can see how much different that is than the opening sentences here, right? We didn't really know what we were going to talk about. We just knew that it had to do with police and maybe being pulled over. But by the end, we get to hear, by the, by the end, we have set up what are we going to talk about in our essay. We're actually going to talk about bias. We're gonna talk about police brutality, okay? 
And notice, I've been nice and specific. I didn't just say, it turns out bias causes police brutality. I've been much more specific there. And then what you're expecting in the essay is for me to talk about those things, right? So one thing that a thesis statement does for our essay that's really important is it lets our reader know exactly what we're going to talk about before we talk about it. You're laying out the conversation for your reader. I always like to tell my students, it's sort of like when you're at a restaurant and they give you a menu. Or if you go to like a fancy restaurant where it's called a prefix menu, they have the first course, second course, third course. You look at the menu and you, okay, here's what we're gonna get. First, we're gonna get this, then we're gonna get this, and we're gonna get the appetizer, you get the second appetizer, you get the entree, you get the dessert, then you get, okay? That's sort of what your thesis is doing. You're telling your reader, hey, I'm gonna talk about this, I'm gonna talk about this, I'm gonna talk about this. And then guess what? The rest of your paragraphs, that's all you're doing. And the great thing about this is once you learn this structure, it pretty much covers all paragraphs. You introduce a general idea in the beginning of your paragraph, then you discuss it in a deeper way. You give details, information, statements from outside sources, numbers, statistics, data. You give them nice details. And then at the end, you kind of sum up what you were talking about. Now, the intro is a little bit different than other paragraphs because we have a thesis at the end. Your body paragraphs don't have a thesis at the end. Okay. But in general, your paragraphs in the body will do the same thing. You'll introduce a general topic, you'll give more information, and then you'll sum it up at the end before moving on to your next idea. Okay? Cool. Okay. So I wanted to unwrap these a little bit and kind of show you this information about in-text citation. And notice, um, just notice in this paragraph and this paragraph down here about nuclear power uh, plants, how this works as well. Notice how many outside sources are used in that. Okay, and notice the size too. You can see here, this is, you know, <coughs> how long is this? Let me count this. Two, four, six, eight, seven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen. So it's almost 20 lines. And the second one, uh, I'm not going to count it. You can go through count. But <laughs> this should also, you know, stick out to you because you don't want to write a five line intro. Okay? So you want your line, uh, uh, intros to be around 14 to 20 lines. Okay? All right, great. So that's all I wanted to show you, kind of to touch upon that, um, walk you through this intro example, and again, remind you to check out the Essay Fundamentals module, especially this PowerPoint here on MLA citation and the in-text citation here too. <clears throat> so make sure you go through that. And um, I think that's pretty much it, okay? If you have any questions about what types of outside sources are you supposed to use? Um, if you go back to the content page and go into the essay one prompt, there it is. I have a whole list of resources you can use for this essay. So these are the places where you can take quotes, data, information from in your argument, all right? Great, and of course, if you have any other, anything else that you find, that's great too, as long as they are credible, reliable sources, not just you know, all right, great. So um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, and please just email me with any questions, comments, concerns. And that's about it. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.